This morning, the big freeze. Now the big fix. State lawmakers to hold hearings this week. What lasting legislative changes, though, might come for the Texas energy industry? State Rep. Jeff Leach is talking about it with us on the program. Is it time for Texas to get on a bigger power grid? We'll talk to Congressman Colin Allred about that and more. Plus, did the winter storm help or hurt the fight against the virus? The Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf from San Antonio. And the unforced political errors of the week. Governor Greg Abbott blaming wind energy for power outages. And Senator Ted Cruz taking off for a beach vacation in the middle of it. We'll talk about the fallout for both. Inside Texas Politics with Jason Whiteley starts now. Good Sunday morning to our viewers across the state. We hope you are swarming up this weekend. And like you, we have a lot of questions about what we just all went through. But first, let's get you caught up on the top political headlines here in our state. We're going to be closely watching what happens on Thursday of this week. That's when two committees in the Texas House are going to meet. And they're supposed to start looking into the factors that led to the statewide power outages. In just a moment, we'll talk to a state rep about legislation that's likely to come out of it. The tangible fallout from the storm is immeasurable. Natural gas supplies sat critically low statewide last week, and the food supply chain got paralyzed and is still catching up. When the lights went off, one Texas dairy farm had to dump $8 million worth of milk that spoiled. And after what you just went through, see if you agree with this statement. Former Texas Governor Rick Perry says the Texans should be willing to go days without electricity, a sacrifice they should make, he says, to keep federal regulators out of the state power grid. A reminder, the former governor used to be in charge of all those federal regulators when he served as Secretary of Energy under Donald Trump. This morning, we are going to be spending a lot of time in this program focusing on the failures during last week's brutal freeze. Let's start with what is indisputable. There are at least three things all sides agree on right now. Too many power plants simply were not ready. There's no standard winterization plan that they all must follow. And Texas just isn't very well connected by design to any other power grid. So we begin this morning with one of the first state lawmakers demanding answers. State Rep Jeff Leach. He is a Republican from Plano in North Texas. Representative Leach, good to see you again. Jason, good morning. Good to be with you. I want to ask you that this uh, right off right off the top here. Should anyone lose their job over this? Well, I absolutely think they should. People have got to be held responsible. And over the next um, several days and in the coming weeks, as we continue on in this legislative session, we're going to have those conversations. We're going to ask the tough questions. We're going to figure out how this could have been prevented, because I do believe that it could have been prevented, even though it was an unprecedented storm that impacted all of Texas, 254 counties, Jason Lee. Jason, absolutely, people should be held accountable. But let me be clear, the buck stops with us. Uh, the buck stops with legislators, elected policymakers at all levels. We're gonna take our job seriously. Uh, we're gonna figure out what went wrong and fix it so it never happens in the state of Texas ever again. Representative, you were one of the first to come out almost immediately, at least on Twitter. That's the only way we can talk during all the storm here. But, but what do you want to see legislatively? What ideas are out there, do you think, that, that might really have traction from all sides on this to really get passed and change things? Well, you hit the nail on the head. It's got to, got to be all sides that have got to come together. This cannot be and should not be political. It can't be a game of bureaucratic hot potato where we're pointing fingers and trying to blame others. we got to take responsibility. we got to own it and fix it. I, I so appreciate the governor's leadership over the past couple of days in, um, in declaring new emergency items for the legislative session that will essentially allow us to take up these items uh, right when we get back to Austin uh, tomorrow. And, um, and, and so we need to be winterizing our generating, uh, gener generating equipment across the state, making sure that, that, that they don't freeze up so that we don't lose such substantial capacity like we did. That's just one answer. Um, but all questions need to be asked. All solutions need to be on the table. And we're going to come together and we're going to get it done this session. Well, one thing the governor said is, is he wants the state to set aside funding to help these uh, power generating plants, uh, you know, winterize their equipment. Should taxpayers be paying for that? I'm real concerned right now about the, I mean, obviously our focus right now is the continuing uh, efforts to, to get people back on their feet. Of course, all power across the state should be on, um, but, but the repairs, the rebuilding continues. Recent reports indicate, Jason, that this 
uh, weather storm this week is going to be the costliest natural disaster in the history of the state of Texas, right. even costlier than Hurricane Harvey. And and um, having said that, uh, we, we cannot put this on the back of taxpayers, on the back of Texans, who many of whom are already struggling as a result of COVID. They've lost jobs. Their businesses have been shut. We got to go to go fight for them, roll up our sleeves and make sure that th this isn't on their backs. And I believe there's a way that we can substantially and smartly invest in our infrastructure right. uh, without doing so. And that's, well, that's going to be the goal this session. Jeff, the, the hearings start this week in the uh, in the House, at least. I want to ask about the Public Utility Commission. That's the, the state oversight board, essentially, for ERCOT, the, the power grid. Um, PUC failed as well on this, too. What changes should the legislature make to the PUC specifically? Should, should heads roll there as well? Well, but there's failures all around at every level. And like I said, we've got to own it. We've got to have the tough conversations, ask the right questions, and we're going to. No question, the PUC has oversight over ERCOT. There are problems with both entities, both agencies. But at the end of the day, the legislature has oversight over the PUC and ERCOT. Right. And the people have oversight over the legislators. And we're hearing loud and clear from our, our our constituents right now who are angry and frustrated. I'm angry and frustrated. And we got to fight and uh, put partisan bickering and, and uh, politics aside and go find answers on their behalf. About 40 seconds left here. I'm curious whether you think Texas should even look at or consider joining uh, one of the larger power grids on the East Coast or on the West Coast. No, I don't. I, I don't think that's the right solution. Um, Texas has our own grid. There are certain uh, challenges that go along with that, but also great, uh, great benefits for the state of Texas, too. What we right. need to do is secure our grid. And um, that's an important conversation. Clearly, it was not secure this week. It failed the people. And uh, we've got to make the necessary investments, and we're going to, to make sure that our grid um, stays our grid good. Um, and that the 28 million Texans have reliable energy going forward. All right. State Rep. Jeff Leach, good to see you again. Thanks so much. Jason, thanks. God bless you. The winter storm and power outages are just the latest test for Texas. There have been problems with the pandemic over the last year, getting the vaccine distributed properly and equitably. And then the pandemic orders themselves started as a mess, leading many to wonder why are we coming up so short here in Texas on organization and on management? Let's pose that question this morning to Ross Ramsey, the co-founder and executive editor of the Texas Tribune. Ross, you are casual and you look warm this morning. I am casual and warm. How are you doing, Jason? We're doing well. Fortunately, we did not lose Great. power. I don't understand how, but I'm thankful for that. I, I want to ask about these power plants failing, though, statewide. The vaccine going to wealthy neighborhoods first, pandemic orders criticized. How would you rate the response of the government over the last year in this state? If it was a CEO, you know, you'd be asking for the CEO's head and you'd be wondering what was going on with the company's stock price. I think, you know, Texas has... Um, got some, you know, what soccer players call an own goal here. I mean, they've made some mistakes on the very fundamental stuff that the government is here for. And I think, you know, at some point, probably starting next week or this week, they're going to have to start answering for it. And sticking with the sports analogy for a moment here, we watched Governor Abbott commit an unforced error, baseball term there, last week when he went on Fox News and blamed the wind energy for all the power outages. That's That's been proven as false, but does something like that stick? I don't think so. I think, you know, what people are really worried about is electricity and water and gas and transportation and all the fundamental things. There's some problems in the food supply chain that are going to continue here. And, you know, the thawing out brings all the water problems with it. So there's a lot of existential stuff to worry about before yeah. we get to things like that. Wow. Ross, thanks a lot. Back to you in just a moment. Sure. Coming up, Congress now planning to investigate the Texas energy crisis. Our interview with Congressman Colin Allred in just a moment. And did a week of brutal winter weather help or hurt the fight against the pandemic? One issue we'll discuss with the Bear County judge, Nelson Wolf from San Antonio. You're watching Inside Texas Politics. This is Inside Texas Politics with Jason Whiteley. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi has a daughter who lives in Houston, and she too was without water and electricity last week, the speaker said. It's one thing she mentioned when announcing a congressional committee is going to start exploring the Texas power outages and what happened. Right in the middle of it all last week, we did make a call to Congressman Colin Allred, a Dallas Democrat who represents parts of Northeast Dallas County. Congressman uh, Allred, it's good to see you. I hope you're staying warm. Yeah, thanks for having me, Jason. Uh, we're, we're lucky uh, we have power right now. I, I want to ask you a, about moving forward from here. We're not out of the woods on this thing yet. It, it, it's been uh, a tough few days here. 
But legislatively, is there anything on the federal side that Congress can do to to prevent this from happening to Texans again? Looking forward, we have to invest our electrical grid across the country. It's not just here in Texas where we have some problems. Uh, our grid needs to be more resilient in Texas uh, and more prepared to deal with some extreme weather events because while this may be something that wasn't expected, I think we will see that more of this will come because that's the nature uh, of the sort of changing climate condition that we're in. So is that a federal investment, you, you think, in, into making a financial investment or a, a legislative investment? Well, what we're going to do, uh, we have this in our infrastructure bill that we passed in the last Congress and we'll pass it, uh, I think, later this year in this Congress, uh, is to try and invest in the next generation of electrical grids, uh, both to promote uh, renewable energy, battery storage, but also resiliency. And that's something that uh, Texas will hopefully be able to draw on uh, in terms of federal funding uh, to try and help uh, the state update our grid. Because what we're trying to do is, is, of course, lower our emissions and also make a more reliable electrical system. And I think we're seeing right now uh, that our system is really subject uh, too much uh, to weather extremes. Yeah. And, you know, talking to ERCOT, it, it seems like the you can kind of spread the blame around. Um, you know, President Biden, for example, was attacked for saying we need to move away from coal. And now Republicans are attacking renewable sources like wind and solar, blaming them for uh, this outage. But ERCOT's saying that, you know, at the end of the day, everything went down. We, we lost wind and solar. We lost natural gas. We lost nuclear for a while. We lost coal plants. It, it seems to me, just on the outside of this, Congressman, that there needs to be a balanced supply here. Well, first of all, I think it's not very productive. And I've seen some of these uh, Texas politicians going on TV and, and blaming renewable energy, which to me is just bizarre. First of all, uh, renewable energy uh, for us keeps our, our prices down. It's something we, we lead the nation in wind energy. And about two thirds of the power that's out right now is the thermal energy that you mentioned, you know, coal, natural gas, the kind that we burn. And so it's not the renewable energy that's causing most of these outages. And I think that's counterproductive. But it is true uh, that having a, a grid where we have a diverse set of inputs is a good thing for us. What it has to be, though, is resilient enough that when you have a weather event, that it doesn't all go off at the same time. And that's what we're seeing. Should Texas rejoin the eastern power grid in the United States or the western power grid? Because the way it's set up right now, I don't think a lot of people knew this. And I just learned it the other day. But the, the most Texas can can get in from the eastern power grid is 800 megawatts. And that's not a lot considering right now, in, in the, or in the height of the storm rather, we're, we're down 45,000 megawatts. Right. Is yeah. it time for Texas to look at plugging in somewhere else instead of going it alone? Certainly the regulations and the protections have to be in place and the planning has to be in place. That when something like this happens, you can draw on emergency supplies. And so, you know, I think there's gonna have to be a full uh, review of what happened and it can't be a partisan thing. It can't be blaming uh, wind power. It can't be blaming, uh, you know, uh, particular politicians like what I've seen. That, that won't help anybody. We need to actually assess what happened here because people are dying. This is very serious. Congressman Allred, thanks for the time. We appreciate it and stay warm. Thanks so much, Jason. The winter storm took our minds off a lot, perhaps most importantly, the pandemic. Many Texans went to hotels, others to family and friends houses to get out of the cold. But then again, no one was really going out for six solid days. So we begin right there with our next guest. It's Nelson Wolf in Bear County, the judge there in Bear County. He joins us from San Antonio. Judge, good morning to you. Good, good morning to you, Jason. I, I want to ask you about the, the, the pandemic. Did the storm help or hurt it? Well, we don't know that yet. Uh, it depends on how many people cluster together in homes, whether they got air circulation or not. Uh, we don't know for sure what would happen there, but uh, through our Bear County Hospital District, we've continued to give vaccines even during this inclement weather. I think over a two day period, uh, we vaccinated somewhere around 6,000 people this week. Wow. We did have to call off Thursday and Friday, uh, but we're opened again Saturday and uh, because we didn't have the vaccine. So we're continuing to uh, uh, work on our uh, on the response to COVID as we uh, go through this uh, terrible uh, energy crisis well, we have. Let's talk about the terrible energy crisis. You, you just sent a letter to the, uh, the, the state uh, delegation, the uh, House and Senate delegation in, in uh, South Texas there. I'm curious what you told them about deregulation. And just before we started the interview, you mentioned that you thought it was a tragic mistake. What do you mean? 
Well, first of all, I did serve in the Texas House and Texas Senate, so I know a little bit about the functioning of the legislature. Uh, I think they made a big mistake back in 1999 uh, when they threw out the integrated utility systems, when they threw out regulation. Uh, they broke up the energy sector into three different groups, uh, transmission lines, retail sellers of energy, and then energy producers. And so what we've seen today is that it's a system that gives no incentive to provide reliability. It's more focused on short-term profits. Uh, we weren't ready for this, and we see the consequences of it. So I've encouraged them to go back to what we knew worked for a long time, which is a regulated system, uh, integrated system, and, uh, and, and go back to what we knew worked and what, happened, what works in the rest of the country. Is we ought to be ashamed of how we handled ourselves down here uh, in the Northeast, Northwest. They have weather much worse than this and much right. longer than this. Well, they managed to get through and we're down here and we can't even get through for four or five days. I I indeed so, Judge, but a regulated system, do you think that's likely to get any traction at all in the Republican legislature? I, 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 I have serious doubts that it will, but I do want to throw it out there. And, uh, and hopefully they will take some other measures to correct it. But uh, uh, the system we have today, we're gonna get another freeze like this. And I, I don't know that they have the political will to stand up to the power of the energy producers. And, but uh, I hope they will, because this certainly is not in, has not been in the best interest of anybody in the state of Texas. Indeed not. Judge Nelson Wolf, we appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. When we come back, the unforced political errors of the week. Governor Greg Abbott blaming wind energy for power outages and Senator Ted Cruz taking off for a beach vacation in the middle of it all. We'll talk about the fallout from both of them next on The Roundtable. This is Inside Texas Politics with Jason Whiteley. Time now for Reporters Roundtable to put the headlines in perspective. It looks a little different this week with us, but Ross is back right here next to me. And joining us each week is Bud Kennedy from the Fort Worth Star Telegram below me here and Bernadine Steptoe, the political producer at WFAA in Dallas. And Ross, we'll start with you. This week, the state lawmakers there in Austin are going to start looking into what happened. And lawmakers have ideas. The governor the other day made a couple of them priorities. What are you expecting to come of this? Well, I think they're going to start off talking about ERCOT and their dissatisfaction with ERCOT. I think they're going to get a tongue lashing, a finger waggling, whatever you want to call it. And then the governor has pointed them to weatherizing the plants. It's basically they need to prep a lot of these plants and a lot of ga natural gas places uh, with the stuff to protect them from cold weather that they don't have now. And Bud, is, is the Texas, you know, Ross just mentioned about, you know, tongue lashing and, and finger wagging. Is it going to be more than that? Do you think that, that everyone can come together and actually get something done? Because not a lot was done after 2011. No, I think it'll be still more politics than governing. I think everybody wants to, to uh, blame, uh, you know, you know, some of them still want to blame wind. Some of them still want to say, oh, this is a fluke. Texas doesn't really get this cold. Uh, you know, they just don't want to spend the money to winterize these plants in Texas. That'll be the debate over whether to spend the money to winterize the power plants and incentivize these energy providers to have their plants where it'll work in this kind of a situation. And Bernadine, that's a, a big question is whether taxpayers should be paying to winterize these uh, power plants, these private facilities. Um, is, is the Texas legislature capable of fixing any of this, do you think? Well, I'm like Bud. Let's see, because we need to uh, find out if they have the political will to do it and uh, whether or not they want to take on the energy I uh, industry. And that's going to have a lot to say now. We, we will say this, that most of the people, most of the lawmakers are Republicans, but this is not a Republican issue. It is a Texan issue. But let's see if our lawmakers have the political will to do what needs to be done. And then also, if you're looking at, at the cost, now, remember, our, our Republicans are all about not increasing taxes and, right. and where, will, where will we get the money? Yeah, especially at a time when the budget is, is less than it was, uh, you know, the previous uh, session because of COVID, of yes. course. You know, uh, Ross, you and I talked a moment ago about Governor Abbott a little earlier in the program, but let's discuss uh, Senator Ted Cruz, the un other unforced political error of the week. He took off for a beach vacation in the middle of the disaster. It, is there any lasting damage to, to him or Texas Republicans? Of course, it's four years before he would run for Senate again if he decides to do that. 
Well, I think you hit the thing right on the button. I think he's his best thing going for Ted Cruz right now is that he's not on the ballot until 2024. <laughs> if he was on the ballot right now, he'd be in big, big trouble. But, Bud, it, it, nothing seems to stick. And, and as I mentioned earlier in the week, and, and as you guys well know, memories are very short in politics. But, uh, of course, Jason Ted Cruz wants to be on the ballot in 2022. He wants to be the Republican nominee for president. And, you know, I'm going to say something today. Uh, nine years ago, it was 2013, he'd barely been elected. I said that I felt like Ted Cruz had a good chance to be president someday, combining faith and values voters, grassroots voters, get the Republican nomination, and then, you know, able to win a close election. This is the first time I'm going to say Ted Cruz has no chance. I think he's ruined his chance to be president. No chance. That's a bold statement, Bernadine. What do you think? I mean, one thing that the senator does is he addresses these things immediately head on and he doesn't let it drag out through multiple news cycles. Well, he addresses these issues after he has to. Remember, with this story, there were two, three different uh, reasons as to why he was on that plane. But I, I agree. I don't think that uh, Ted Cruz has has uh, the opportunity to be president. Uh, because wow. then you don't know what's going to happen within the next couple of years because something always happens with Ted Cruz that generates negative headlines. Yeah, it's a, it's a bold statement. We shall see. Having covered his uh, his last presidential ambition, we all know that he made it a, a long way, falling second to uh, President Trump. Guys, thanks so much. We appreciate it. And thank you for watching as well this morning. We'll see you again next Sunday right here on Inside Texas Politics. Let's hope this next week is much better than the last one. Stay healthy and have a good week.